Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are starting to dive a little bit deeper into our expression tool expedition. Uh, specifically, I'm going to start looking at uh, manually positioning your expressions, which is uh, going to be important as you're going because uh, expressions will get in the way of things all the time. So we're going to want to know how to move them around. Um, first of all, it's easy enough with the selection tool. You can just grab something and drag it. That's easy enough. You can also do that with the expression tool itself. Uh, there's a handle there. You just grab that and uh, move it around. And that's really the easy way to do it. Um, with the shift key held down, you can constrain the dragging to one axis. So in this case, I held down shift and now I'm dragging left and right. And that will prevent me from moving it up and down at all. Uh, if I were to hold down shift and initially move upwards, then I could straighten the dragging to the vertical so left and right movements will not move that uh, dynamic in this case in at all. All right, uh, so that's the shift dragging. Um, if we ever move an element out of the way and we decide that we want it to go back to the original default position, uh, we can right click it for the contextual menu and there's an option here called remove manual adjustments and that will uh, place it back to the original position that it was uh, when you first entered it. All right. Um, in addition to uh, using the mouse to drag, we can actually use the arrows as well to sort of nudge the element up or down. Uh, as needed, and you can see the, the piano marking there will move a very little bit. All right, so that's the es essentials of moving things around. Um, there's some other things to know about expressions and as far as moving things around. In this case, if you notice in the end of this first system here, I have this unison marking that looks like it's attached to the last measure of the flute. The thing about these expressions is that, as I mentioned in the first video, they all get attached to a horizontal position in the measure, right? And if you click on that unison marking here, you'll notice that there is a sort of dashed line that uh, attaches to a point in a measure. And what you'll see here is that this uh, attachment point is actually in the second to last measure. It's not actually part of this last measure. Now, it sort of looks like this unison is attached to this last measure. However, if we go into the part, the flute one part itself, what we'll notice is that that unison is not, not actually attached to that eighth measure. It's attached to that seventh measure, but it's just really far to the right. That's because that attachment point is attached to the end of that seventh measure, right? So although it doesn't seem to appear to have much of an effect in the score, sometimes uh, if, the, if the layout is different in the parts, there will be a, a big difference there. So all this is to say is that you do have to be careful about where that attachment point is. And, and as you can see, as you move this element around, that attachment point will jump from different uh, horizontal uh, points in the measure, right? Um, so you just kind of have to be aware of that. Uh, the trick to this is that sometimes you do need this marking, for example, to be attached to this measure so that it appears at the right place in the part, but it needs to be out of the way. If I had some notes in this flute part that were at the beginning of the measure, this unison marking would be in the way. And in fact, if I moved it to the left, then it would be attached to this measure, which we don't want. So Finale does provide us a way of moving this element without moving the attachment point. So if you get the attachment point right, hold down the Option key and move that element. And I'm doing this from the Selection tool. You can also do this from the, uh, from the Expression tool itself. So again, just hold down Option and move that element, and you'll see that the attachment point, no matter how far I move it, you'll see that attachment point is getting attached all the way to that eighth measure. So now, if I put that there, all right, so, and then we go back to the flute part, you'll notice that it does stay attached to that eighth measure, and it's just off a little bit up to the left there, all right? So it's an important thing to know about it, holding down option and just being aware of where things are attached. Now, I'm just going to reset this. Um, now, I haven't really talked much about linked parts in this series yet, but as far as expressions are concerned, um, the linking feature is sort of important, so I thought it would be worth mentioning. If you go into any part, I'm going to go back to this flute part, and start moving elements around, in this case I'm going to move this unison expression, uh, what you'll notice is that the, the element will turn orange, right? And what that means is it's just indicating that this element is now unlinked from the score, and it's unlinked in positioning, right? So the position that it takes in the flute part here is now completely unique to the score. So in fact, I could move this all the way over here up to the left 
and uh, you'll notice that in the score, it doesn't get moved at all. It it's remains in place, right? Um, so that's sort of uh, an important thing to know about. And incidentally, if you right click, we do have options at the bottom here for relinking it in all parts again. If we choose that, it will turn green again. And in the part, that unison marking will go back to where it was originally, right? Uh, and of course, if we right click, you'll see, you might have seen just above that, it says unlink. So if we unlink, now it turns orange. And once again, this unison marking is unique position wise between the score and the part. And from here, I'm in the score right now. I can actually move this element a little bit. I can move it way up here. And you'll notice in the part that it doesn't move that far because this, uh, this part is now unlinked for that expression, right? Um, so again, when things, uh, let me just reset this, relink, and remove manual adjustment. So the idea behind this is that if the element is still green and you move it in the score, um, that movement will uh, result in the part as well, right? You can see that unison got moved off to the right there. Once the element is unlinked and it turns orange, then any movement that you make in either the score or the parts will be unique to that score or that part. That's sort of the, the basics of how uh, linking and unlinking uh, elements in your score works. So far, I've been talking about staff-specific expressions, this unison marking and the dynamics are all staff-specific expressions. There's a couple unique characteristics of uh, system expressions, like these uh, tempo markings uh, that I want to point out. In this case, I have my tempo marking set so that it appears above the flute, but also above the violin one, right? And it sort of looks like these are two separate expressions, but in fact, they're not. It's just one expression that's being shown in two different places. Now, when you move expressions like this, um, what will happen is that they will move together. So if I move the, the expression up here from the flute one part, you can watch down here as the violin part, uh, ex the expression above the violin part will move as well. Right? You can see them sort of moving in conjunction. That's just sort of how that works. However, if you were to move the bottom one above the violin staff, it's only going to move that expression. You'll notice that the one above the flute part is not moving at all. Right, so that's allowing you to sort of unlinking, uh, you know, the 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 uh, system expression in that way. The interesting thing is that now that I've moved this uh, bottom one, if I try to move the top one again, what it's going to do is it's going to move them both in parallel. Right, so they are in different positions, but they're moving uh, parallel to each other. Right. And with these system expressions, it doesn't matter if I right click the top one or the bottom one. Uh, and choose the remove manual adjustments option, it will remove the manual adjustment for both the top and the bottom simultaneously. There's no way to actually, uh, you know, effectively relink this bottom, what I would call the slave uh, version of the expression, um, to, to relink it to the, to the master version of it, right? It always just resets both of them back to the master position or to the original position so the trick to dealing with these types of systems expressions is you, you got to move the top one first put that where you want it to in this case just a little bit lower to get out of the way of the rehearsal mark there and then move the bottom one and this one's a little bit too close to my arco marking there so I can move that up just a hair um, and that's how you would have to deal with it so with those systems expressions again just move the top one first and then the bottom one into place and that's how you would deal with that now, if you remember from the uh, Smart Shapes lessons, there is a, a nifty way to align elements uh, hor horizontally or vertically. In fact, with these uh, um, with these hairpins here, you can right click and choose this align horizontally option to get those hairpins to be in a straight line. Unfortunately, that doesn't exist with expressions. You can select all of these and choose one of them and right click and there's no align option in the contextual menu. Um, however, there is a really nifty way of aligning these expressions. Uh, this is particularly handy with uh, dynamics. And uh, all you have to do is select it with the selection tool. And there's a plugin that comes with Finale. It's the last one here, TG Tools, the first one, Align Move Dynamics. And when you select that, we get this little utility here um, that allows us to put expressions and hairpins as well uh, in, a, in a straight line. And uh, shape expressions as well, although most of the time we don't really use a lot of shape expressions, so it doesn't really matter if that's checked or not. And in fact, if there are no hairpins in the selection, it's obviously not going to move any hairpins. So it doesn't necessarily matter 
if these are all checked, um, if you don't have all of these elements. And then what you can do is on the left-hand side here, align to the nearest element, which would be the element closest to the staff. In this case, I think that's the mezzo forte. The farthest element, which would be the mezzo piano, or you can align to an average distance, or you can actually set to a specific value, uh, I guess that's against uh, or away from the staff, right? So in this case, I'm gonna choose to average distance. And I've got these measures selected, uh, to average distance go, and you'll see that the um, dynamics now get put in a line. What's really cool about this utility is, once again, it will work with hairpins as well. So it's actually moving the expression and the smart shapes together. You should choose the same thing, to average distance go, and you'll see it put all of those, uh, those um, dynamics in a row, which is really kind of handy to know about. So again, that's in the plugins, the TG Tools, Align, Move Dynamics, and that plugin is, uh, you know, uh, built into uh, the, f the finale that you get out of the box. Now, as I mentioned in the first video on expressions, uh, expressions have a myriad of default positioning available to them, and some of them have vertical positions that are tied to a invisible baseline. Now, an invisible baseline uh, either exists in both above and below any given staff. And I, I've created a few expressions here uh, called baseline and no baseline, baseline, no baseline. And all that these are are these expre are, are expressions that have um, positionings that are, are pinned against the baseline above, uh, the baseline below, I'm circling here, or not positioned against the baseline at all, as is where it says no baseline, right? And the ones on the right-hand side here, these are the same expressions, but they're just um, pinned a little bit uh, closer to the staff, or manually moved a little bit closer to the staff, I should say. So these ones that have baselines and certain elements in your score, like dynamics, uh, to a degree are pinned to the baseline, although there's an alternate positioning that's called below staff baseline or entry, which means that it will pin to the baseline except when the notes are in the way, and then the dynamic will get uh, lower out of the way of the notes. So that's a sort of unique situation with dynamics and any other expression that has that setting. But generally speaking, uh, either of those settings that have to do with the, the baseline uh, can be adjusted with baselines. And the baselines, uh, again, they're, they're sort of vertical, in, in, invisible vertical lines that run across the, the staff on any given system or the entire score. And they're adjusted by these triangles on the left-hand side. And with the case of expressions, we have an above staff baseline and a below staff baseline. And to adjust either of them, we do have to go into the expression menu here. And at the very top, you'll see one of these options will be checked, adjust below staff baseline or adjust above staff baseline. So if you needed to adjust the above staff baseline, you'd have to check that one. And you'll see when you click in the horn two part, you'll get this uh, set of triangles to the left here. Um, that will adjust these baselines. Now, these triangles are a little bit confusing, but let me do my best to actually describe what they do. So the first triangle all the way on the left is sort of the master baseline adjustment. Uh, and again, there's two of them, one for above and one for below, depending on which one you have selected. Now, the master baseline adjustment will basically move the baseline up or down uh, compared to the top um, uh, staff line um, for the entire score for all staffs for both um, score and parts and also for both uh, page and scroll view. It's sort of the master adjustment for all the baselines above the staff. So if you move that uh, leftmost triangle, you'll see that uh, all of the baselines uh, that uh, for that adjust the above staff baselines will get moved. So these two elements got moved in the horn too, but also in the trombone. You can see those got moved. If we undo that, you'll see all of that go back to normal. Um, if we adjust the below staff baselines and we, we select that uh, first triangle, you'll see that it doesn't matter all of the below staff baselines. And you saw some of the dynamics move again as well, right? Because I mentioned that the dynamics actually are pinned to a degree to that below staff baseline, right? So that first triangle is basically universal. The second triangle will control just a single staff for the entire um, for the entire score, for both the, the score and the parts, and also for uh, page view and scroll view. So if you adjust that second triangle just uh, for the horn two part, if I can grab it, 
um, it will only move that lower bass line for just the horn part, right? And that will uh, affect the entire score, whether it's on this system or the previous system. Um, these two, these also got moved, as you can see. And uh, so that's what that does. Mm, I don't know why these are jumping around on me. Um, the second, or sorry, the third bass line, or uh, the third triangle bass line adjustment here will adjust only the uh the staff on this on that particular system that you're looking at for jet for that particular score or part so um that third triangle is sort of where you're going to do the majority of your work with bass lines um because that will uh you know it will only adjust basically what you're looking at um whether that be in the score or the part so if i do that here um i can move this bottom bass line for horn two down and actually if i go into the horn two part um, those bass lines have not moved um, unless I go and move the bass line in the part, right? So that's, uh, that's sort of how that works. You can have unique bass lines uh, between part and score uh, using that third triangle. Now the fourth triangle, the fourth triangle is a little bit interesting. <laughs> Let me just, uh, if, if I were to put in a tempo expression here, for example, let's put in a larghissimo, uh, expression there. The fourth triangle only affects the next element that's put in your score. So if I were to grab that fourth triangle and move it down, nothing happens in the score until I put another element, uh, another text, or another uh, tempo element, and you can see that it put it below. Now, interestingly, what's happening here is that it's literally only essentially moving this element off of the baseline itself. So I can actually go and actually move the, the other baselines and you'll see them move together, right? So it's, it's essentially just making a manual adjustment, which to me is kind of silly because you can always just add the, the, the new uh, expression and then drag it in the same way. So uh, I don't necessarily see the, the, uh, the great value in using that fourth triangle in this way, but uh, that's, that's kind of what it does. Um, so again, with those triangles, the first one is sort of the universal uh, for the entire score for every staff, for every part and score. The second one, you know, is specific to that staff for both the staff, for both the part and the score. The, th the third one is where you're going to do the majority of your work, uh, visually speaking. Um, and that one is, is uh, unique to each score and part and each system uh, for that staff. All right. Um, so that covers it. Th there's a lot to know about, you know, how to adjust, make these adjustments, and um, hopefully this has been helpful. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you soon on the next video.